Florida Governor Ron DeSantis officially launched his first campaign tour in Iowa yesterday, the first stop on a four-day push through three early voting states. DeSantis criticized elites several times during his speech, and he called on his supporters to move to Washington, D.C. I wish the elites in Washington, D.C. would take a page out of the Iowa playbook, but instead they have ignored what works and they've continued to plunge this nation into the abyss. Our country is going in the wrong direction. We need to inspire Americans from around the country to maybe pick up your family and move to the nation's capital for two, four, six, or eight years because we need people who live in the country to come out to D.C. to reassert the right of we the people to run our own government. <laughs> D.C. has imposed its will on us for far too long. It's time we impose our will on Washington, D.C. After the rally, DeSantis delivered his most direct attacks of the former president so far. I'm going to respond to uh, attacks. I mean, if, if you say Cuomo did a better job with COVID than Florida did, first of all, that's not what he used to say. This is like new. Like six months ago, he would have never said that, right? He used to say how great Florida was. Hell, his whole family moved to Florida under my governorship. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, they actually did. Um, I mean, they, they, they actually did. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering... Um, you look at you look at the speech, Jen. Seems you so look angry. at the press conference. He actually does look like he may be willing to to go after uh, Donald Trump a little bit here and there. It is fascinating, though, telling people from Iowa you need to move <laughs> to the District of Columbia. I don't know. That Maybe not my lead. To do what? Move to the District of Columbia to do what? They're not a. Right. I mean, they're not uh, it's not uh, for better or worse. D.C. is not governed by the people who live here. <laughs> Definitely not governed by the people who live here. The um, but the thing with so I think DeSantis That's strange. The, it's strange, right? Yeah, that is, that is very strange. But the thing with DeSantis, he's uh, I thought yesterday, you know, from what he's trying to accomplish went well. What I don't really get, I'm interested in everyone's view on this, is why Trump is attacking DeSantis as much as he is. Trump is way up in the polls, right? Uh, he has, most polls have him with a 20 digit, 20 point lead over uh, DeSantis. In the states, in the early primary states, not quite as high, but still a lead. And he, you, he, should be a, he should be ignoring DeSantis. He should just be acting like the front runner and ignore DeSantis. And instead, he's been attacking him, and he's been attacking him as a hypocrite, right? Saying, well, DeSantis was for me in 2018 when he ran. He had that ad talking about MAGA, um, and now he's against me. And it reminds me, it's interesting because it reminds me of the attacks that other Republicans made against Trump in 2016 that did not work, right? So it's it's Trump acting as a conventional candidate. Um, and I think it may just be serving to elevate DeSantis. Republican voters like DeSantis, even Trump voters like DeSantis. I don't know that they're gonna like Trump going after DeSantis. And when DeSantis does not attack Trump in his speeches, right? He talks about people moving to DC, weird, but whatever, he's not attacking Trump. He responds in the press conferences when Trump attacks him, and that may go over better, particularly in Iowa, than, uh, than what Trump's doing. We haven't really seen polling yet from after that can tell us how DeSantis is actually doing since he's announced, but I'm really interested to see if these Trump attacks on him are hurting DeSantis or end up hurting Trump. I think maybe DeSantis meant run for office. He said move there for two, four, or six years. I assume I so. I think that's what he meant. But. Donald Trump will be in Iowa today and tomorrow. Yep. He's coming in after Ron DeSantis to get the sort of the last word among those two. But this is how he ran in 2016. Who's at the top of the polls? Who's the favorite of the moment? Jeb Bush. Vaporize him, call him low energy Bush, Jeb, and then move down the line. So I guess that's why he's going after Ron DeSantis. But DeSantis's performance yesterday, well received in the room. 
maybe not the smoothest of political operators, but it's early here. Yeah, it is early. He has time to improve, but he certainly faces questions that he's not particularly charismatic on the stump. He doesn't possess a lot of retail political skills, not a lot of face-to-face -face time with voters. We've seen some clips go viral in recent days when he has tried to uh, approximate a human laugh uh, when shaking someone's <laughs> hand. Um, I think, as to Jen's point, Trump does risk elevating DeSantis by singling him out, but at the same time, people around Trump say, well, he's been attacking him, and it's worked. DeSantis has pulled numbers of collapse. And now some of that it might, is surely DeSantis' own endorsement of extreme policies, particularly, uh, Mara, uh, the abortion ban there in Florida. But the Trump people think that this is, they're just crushing him. And they've seen that Monmouth poll we just briefly flashed there shows that a, a 20-point swing uh, in the race. So that seems to be where Trump is now. I mean, DeSantis, what does he need to do here, do you think, just as your analysis, to sort of try to reverse that slide? Yeah. And part of it's going to have to be taking on Trump probably more directly than we just saw. Yeah, I mean, just watching him campaign on the stump there, you, he's an extremely awkward uh, campaigner so far. To your point, he could get better, so he needs to either get a lot better really quickly, um, or, uh, you know, alternatively, he can uh, kind of stay away from those big rallies that Donald Trump is, uh, you know, that's his signature. So maybe DeSantis cannot go head to head with Donald Trump um, kind of holding court. That's Donald Trump's specialty. So far, I don't see how he's going to compete against Trump on that level. DeSantis seems to be best at kind of uh, a quick jab retreating, uh, coming out with some extreme policy that the base may like, like the six-week abortion ban, then kind of retreating. Um, but the more he's in front of cameras, the more we see him campaigning, doing retail events um, on the stump, the more obvious it is that he may not be ready for prime time. And Joe, he's leaning in, if you listen to his speeches and watch him answer questions yesterday, into the six-week abortion ban running to the right of Donald Trump on that issue, but also the Disney fight. He is touting the Disney fight. He's proud of the Disney fight. I guess maybe he has some internal numbers that show it works in the primary, although mm -hmm. the public polling does not suggest it's working. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think for whatever reason, with people who vote in Republican primaries, Strange. Disney is uh, they feel like Disney is a, is a winning issue for them. You know, Jen, though, it, it's fascinating until 2016, the way you won Iowa, the way you won New Hampshire, the way you won South Carolina, the way you won the presidency is you went, you knocked on doors, you shook hands, you held hundreds of town hall meetings. You, you know, you met people in, in Iowa, New Hampshire, six, seven, eight, nine times. And, I, I, you know, I've, I've been talking about a, sort of a return to, uh, to the laws of gravity uh, in not only in the law, but also in American politics. You know, I, we're, we're all focused on how Trump flies in, he gives a speech, he says these horrible things on social media, it chins up the base. There is an exhaustion factor there, even among Republicans, especially among Republicans who want to win. And I'm just wondering, Ron DeSantis goes the traditional route. He goes the alternative route. He knocks on doors. He shakes hands. You know, he, he, he didn't go down any golden elevator, uh, escalator to, to announce. He didn't do what Ted Cruz did and went to the biggest, you know, uh, evangelical uh, group of people he could find. He announced in an Iowa church, talked to him there, shook hands. And, and did it in sort of the old fashioned way. He did things Donald Trump will just never do. Uh, and so I'm wondering, maybe, maybe that's a path forward. We are just getting into June now. He's got six, seven months uh, before to do it. And let me tell you something, uh, from somebody that had no money the first time, uh, first time I ran, you use that time, you knock on doors, you shake people's hands, you go into their homes, you hold small town hall meetings in neighborhoods, and you just do it. You just check off one precinct, one neighborhood, one community after another. Suddenly, people don't know who you are until one day, everybody knows who you are. And in DeSantis's case, I'm just wondering if one yard sign at a time, one handshake at a time, one community center at a time, doesn't add up over six months to actually help him, uh, you know, possibly beat Donald Trump. Um, I'm wondering the same thing, particularly around, particularly in Iowa, which is a state that is a state that doesn't like uh, 
predetermined outcomes, doesn't like people, doesn't like uh, incumbents. Uh, incumbents generally, you know, often don't do well there. Uh, people who've been in power before, they like to find, they like to sort out and find a new leader. And they don't like people that attack other Republicans. You know, I was in, um, I saw an event that Donald Trump did in Iowa. Uh, he said something about Ron DeSantis. You know, he said something, um, he, he attacked Ron DeSantis in some way, and people just didn't react. I've seen that at other Trump rallies. Trump attacks DeSantis, people don't react. They don't like it, because they, they, they actually like Ron DeSantis. They like both of them. They want Trump to be, some Trump supporters want Trump to be president, they want Ron DeSantis to be president after him. And this is why, you know, I wonder, yeah, DeSantis is, is, is down a lot, but I do, I do wonder about Trump continuing to attack him. I know that that's what they do, and it's, it's, it's hurt other people. It's hurt other Republican candidates, particularly in 2016. Um, but no one has attacked Trump from the right on social issues the way that Ron DeSantis is doing it. And no one has the record, for better or worse, that Ron DeSantis has on being ultra-right, ultra-MAGA on social issues. And it may be in Iowa that that can, that that can work. And, you know, he presents a nice face on his, when he's giving his speech, nice face, doesn't really attack Trump, um, makes veiled attacks on him, but doesn't go after him directly. And that could wear well. I mean, we've got a long time, 10 months, I think, to the, at least to the, um, or eight months to the, to when people actually vote in Iowa, so he could wear well. Um, hmm. How it, how that how that um, goes once you know you move on in the primary, I don't know. Um, how like how uh, Sanders would do in New Hampshire, for example, where they're not so excited about a six-week yeah. abortion ban. But in Iowa, I could see it. I could see him winning.